Hello everyone, welcome back to my SOC Home Lab. In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how you can automate SOC workflows using an AI agent. So for my lab setup, I'm using VMware and I have three virtual machines. I have a Windows 11 machine that's going to act as the victim, Kali machine that will be the attacker, and then I have an Ubuntu machine to host the AI agent. So on my host PC, I have the Splunk search head and I have the universal forwarder on the Windows 11 PC, and I've configured it to send the search head sysmon events. So what we're going to do is create an alert in Splunk that'll tell us if a process has been executed from the downloads folder of the Windows 11 PC, and that will send a webhook to the agent, and the agent will take the hash of this process, look it up in virus total, and if it is malicious, we're going to configure it to send our search head an event that'll say the um, verdict, if it's malicious or not. It'll um, show how many vendors recognize this process as malicious. And then we're also going to include the full virus total analysis link. Okay, so before we create the alert, first we're going to go to our Windows 11 machine and we're going to execute a non malicious file from our downloads folder. So I've already moved the notepad executable to the downloads folder. So I'm just going to open it up. OK. We will go to our Splunk search head. So for the alert, we need to look in our index, or our syspunk index, and then the event description be a process creation. And then for the executable, it's going to be anything that has a .exe. And then for the process path, this is going to be our downloads folder. So there's chaos24 downloads. Okay, so as you can see, we see our notepad executable here. Um, let's make sure, oh, notepad. Now we're going to save this as an alert. Uh, so it needs to be real time. And then for the trigger action first, we're just going to add to trigger at events, save. Oh yeah, of course we need to add a title, so we'll just do process executed. Okay. Save. Okay, so we'll go to our alert now just to test it again. Go back here run this and we'll go to activity triggered alerts and boom here is our alert okay so now we need to add another trigger action to our alert so that it will contact the agent using a webhook but first we need to set up the agent itself so we'll go to our ubuntu machine i've already downloaded the software so we'll start it up Access the browser. Okay, so we'll once you create your account, log in. You can go ahead and create workflow. Um, okay, so to add the first step, webhook, and we're gonna do post method. We'll do a simple path. Okay, that's all for now. So go back to our search head. Edit the alert. We're going to add a webhook. So for the URL, we're going to have our Ubuntu uh, IP address. 
Then we'll have the webhook test and then our path. And then also we're going to add one parameter so that the agent can grab the hash of the process and use it to look up in virus total. So we'll just add a hash equals the result of the SHA-256 field. Now check over it and save it. Done. Now we need to test this webhook. So we'll go listen for test event, then to our Windows 11 machine, start up Notepad, and Node executed successfully. All right, the next step is to create an HTTP request. Go here, and the URL is going to be the virus total API endpoint. And for that, And then we can also add our hash that we got from our parameter, add the file object. And okay, this is our result, so that looks good. And then for authentication, we'll do a predefined credential type. We can just type in virus total. And now we're going to need to create a new virus total account. Um, and we're going to need our API key. So you need to create a virus total account, go to your API key that is automatically generated, copy this, paste it here, save. All right. And then we can just quickly test this out. And there we go. All right, so the next step in our workflow is gonna be an if node. And this is going to check whether the process is malicious. And if it is, it'll forward it to the next step. If not, the workflow will stop. So to do this, we're going to change this to a number. And we're going to do is greater than. And then we're going to find which object displays how many vendors recognize the process as malicious. And I believe that is down here, right, right here. Drag this object. And so now let's just test it out. OK. All right, so the next step is to add a new request going to Splunk if the file is malicious. But before we can do that, we need to set up the HTTP event collector on our Splunk interface. So you have to go to settings and data inputs. Now I have already set one up. So right here is my token that I can use for authentication. So I'm just gonna copy this right now. And then let's go back here. So we need an HTTP request. And gonna be a post method. And for the URL, this will be the Splunk HTTP event collector. Now for the authentication, we're going to use headers. So the first one will be the authorization header. And the value for this, you do Splunk space and the token. We're gonna add another one. Content type the JSON. All right. All right, now, so the body of the request, first we're gonna enable that. It is going to be JSON, and then we'll use, using JSON selection. 
Now to make this easier, first, before we do that, we need to execute a malicious process so the request will be forwarded to this node. So I'm going to go back here, execute workflow. Now for our fake file, we can go to this IP address or this URL. Now, before you do this, you're going to have to disable the Windows antivirus so you can actually download the file. Now, this file is not actually malicious. It's just a fake malicious file. So virus total will identify it as malicious, but it doesn't actually do anything. So you download it, keep. All right. Now this is in our downloads folder and run it. Go back here. Okay. So now you can see that it got forwarded to this HTTP request because the malicious object in the request was higher than zero. So now I'm gonna go here. Okay, for the JSON message we're gonna send, we're gonna send the file hash, the verdict, whether it was malicious or not, going to send how many vendors identified it as malicious, how many identified it as undetected, and how many identified it as harmless, and also the virus total link. So first, to send the file, you need to figure out where it is located in the JSON request. So it's right here, the hash, and that is under attributes, which is under data. So for the JSON message, we'll write it like this. For the file hash, All right, and you can see the result here is our hash because we grabbed it from our input. Now, next one, we'll do the verdict. So we can just type in verdict equals malicious because every request by this point will be a malicious request. Okay. Then we'll do how many or how many vendors identified this as malicious, and for that number, we are going to look where that is. Let's see. right here so what are this i'm just going to copy okay and you can see right here the result is 60, which is the same as right here. And then next one, we'll do undetected. Okay. And lastly, we'll do the harmless section. Got this. Okay. 
And then lastly, for the virus total full analysis, we can just do So it'll just be the URL, and then you can add on the hash. And that's going to be the same as this. Okay. And then to end it off, Okay, so everything looks good. Let's test it out. Okay, looks like we need to fix our JSON. Okay, just had to fix some syntax. So now, if we execute it, you'll notice we have an SSL issue. So in real production environments, you're definitely going to want to set up TLS certificates. Um, but in this case, for our lab, we don't need it. So we'll just add this option, ignore SSL issues, execute the step, and it worked. All right, so the last step of our workflow is we need to create an alert from the event we got from our agent. So to do this, we can go and add this to our search. So when the index is main and the verdict is malicious, we can create this alert real time. And all we're going to do is just add to triggered alerts. And we'll name it malicious process detected, save. Okay, so now that we have everything set up, we can run through our attack from start to finish. So first, going to download the fake virus file onto our Kali machine. So we're gonna to go to the same URL, <clears throat> allow download. Now, we'll be in our downloads folder, okay? And we are going to start an HTTP server using Python and just serve this directory over port 80. Enter. Okay. So now we are going to first go to our AI agent, start listening. And then I'm going to go to Windows machine, open up a browser, and we need to type our Calibox IP. Okay. And so here is our virus. So in a real attack scenario, <clears throat> um, this will be delivered through a phishing email. So we can just pretend like I'm an employee who clicked the link in an email and it brought me to this page, which would be the malicious website that the attacker is serving. So I click the link, keep it, and now this is in our downloads folder. And we're going to go ahead and run it. Run, and then check here, our workflow executed successfully, and we will check Splunk for the alerts. And these are our two new alerts.